the following question reads that uh, use of the kinetic theory to explain the following and uh, there are four parts to the question the first one states uh, when you take a uh, take a block of butter out of the fridge it is quite hard however after 15 minute, minutes it is soft enough to spread so this is what is basically happening uh, you take it out of the fridge the butter is very rigid it's very uh, it's a, it's a, it's a very hard solid and after some time uh, you let it, uh, uh, you keep it out and then you can easily spread it on a piece of bread. So as you keep uh, the butter outside, uh, the temperature of the butter increases. The particles, uh, they become, they gain more kinetic energy. And when they gain more kinetic energy, what they do is that the energetic particles, when they start gaining energy from outside, they overcome the strong intermolecular forces that are keeping them in this solid, rigid, uh, rigid structure. So the process that is taking place is very similar to melting. So initially, when you take butter out of the fridge, solid butter, the particles, uh, they don't have a lot of energy and they are uh, strongly attracted to each other or relatively the intermolecular forces are very, very strong. So all the particles are holding each other in place. They're not very energetic, they're not very, they're not vibrating very uh, vigorously, they don't have a lot of kinetic energy, so they're not moving about or they're not capable of moving around, so it's a very rigid structure. But as they gain energy, as energy is added, and where is the energy coming from? That energy comes from the surrounding. The air particles are colliding with it, uh, it's put on a, so all the environment around it is more energetic because this butter was in the fridge, it was it had very less less energy, so when it uh, when you put it out in the kitchen, the air molecules would collide with it, and it, they're going to transfer energy to these particles, and the particles are going to become more energetic. So after several minutes, when it's kept out in the open, the particles are now more energetic, and they are now vibrating more vigorously, and they are breaking the intermolecular forces. And once the energetic particles they overcome the intermolecular forces, now it's much easier to move them around. So you can apply pressure with a with a knife and you can spread it. So now you can see over here, uh, you can easily, the intermolecular forces, uh, the particles are energetic and you can apply a pressure with a knife and you can spread the particles around. So that is what's happening and that is why it becomes easier for the butter, uh, it's easier to spread the butter after several minutes. Uh, when it was very cold, when the particles were not very energetic, uh, the intermolecular forces were still in place and the particles were strongly holding each other together. So uh, it was a lot more difficult for for you to spread the butter around. Now, part B of the question, same question states that when you come home from school and open the door, you can smell your tea being cooked. So here's a picture of uh, some very hot and delicious tea. And uh, remember one thing that it is actually very easy for you to smell hot things. Even if you, if you have hot food, uh, you can smell it from very far away. Uh, if the food is in the fridge, it's, uh, it's cold, uh, you're not capable of smelling it. So why is it that a person standing nearby is capable of uh, actually smelling hot things, but not cold things? So here's a student standing nearby and I'm going to explain why uh, this hot tea is easier to smell than other cold substances. What you can see over here is uh, when particles are really, really hot or heated up, then these particles, uh, let's think of these very large particles and you can actually see in the image, you can see these particles are uh, evaporating and moving around. So these particles would eventually travel and they're going to travel with the wind and they're going to travel randomly in all directions. So you can see these uh, T particles that have uh, that have broken the intermolecular force. So remember this was liquid T. The particles were uh, tightly or strongly attracted, relatively strongly attracted to each other. But now because the temperature is very high, there's a lot of kinetic energy. These particles are randomly moving about. And these particles are going in all different directions. Eventually, a few of the particles are going to reach the nose of this girl over here. And she, because she has a sense of smell, she would be able to smell the tea very, very quickly. So if I need to write an explanation for this, the explanation would be like this. So I've uh, written the explanation down. Uh, so what's happening is... They're energetic particles, they break the intermolecular forces and leave the surface of tea. You can see these particles leaving and they start traveling randomly in all directions and eventually reaching your nose and you can smell them using your sense of smell. Now part C of the question states that a football is blown up until it is hard on a hot summer day. In the evening, the football feels softer. 
So what's happening? Why is it uh, very hard when it's uh, it's a hot summer day and when it's evening, when it's when the temperatures are lower, when it's cooler, the football feels softer. So here is my football. Let's imagine this is my football. And these are the gas particles inside the ball. And these gas particles, uh, since it's a hot day, uh, they're going to be more energetic, which means that these particles are randomly flying around. So this particle over here would be randomly moving around in this entire ball and it would be very energetic. It would be overcoming the intermolecular forces and it would be colliding with the walls of the ball. So if these particles over here, they're energetically colliding with the walls of the container. So they're going to create this outward pressure. They're going to keep the ball very, very rigid. They're going to hit the wall of the container very with, because they're more energetic. So with a greater force. So I've written it down, the particles collide with the walls and exert a force, a pressure, making the ball feel very, very rigid because they're very energetic particles. So constant collision is happening. But what happens if, uh, if in the evening, what happens? Why does the ball feel soft? Now, in most evenings, you have lower temperature and the particles have lesser kinetic energy. So the particles are not randomly moving around that fast. They're not randomly moving or freely moving around in all directions. Uh, but the speed or the force at which they're colliding with the walls of this football, that's not going to be very large. They're going to be less energetic. So these very same particles, even in lower temperature, the particles are less energetic. They move slower, they have lesser speed and a lesser force exerted on the walls when they collide. So lesser pressure would be exerted on the walls of this uh, football. The particles are not moving that fast. Uh, they're not hitting the hitting the walls of the container as frequently, and they're not exerting a very large force. So there's going to be there's going to be uh, lesser pressure on the walls of the football, which makes it softer. So in the hot summer day, uh, more energetic particles they exert a greater force on the walls of the container when they collide, so they exert a much greater pressure. In part D of the question, the question states when a person wearing perfume enters a room, it takes several minutes for the smell to reach the back of the room. So here you can see a person that's entering the room and he's wearing perfume. Now the perfume has these tiny particles uh, that evaporate and they change into gas and they start moving randomly in all directions. So they're, they're constantly randomly moving in all directions. Uh, and they would be moving equally because they're gaseous particles. So gaseous particles move freely in all directions. So slowly, because of their random movement, these particles are going to spread. And they're going to continuously move and collide with other gas particles. Uh, remember, they are air particles as well. So they would be randomly uh, colliding with the air par particles and moving in totally random uh, directions in all directions. And eventually this particle, after colliding with the air particles, would continuously move and uh, may end up in one corner of the room. And this would be applied to all the other particles as well. So slowly and steadily these uh, perfume particles, uh, they're going to mix with the air particles, collide with the air particles and they will constantly move and eventually they're going to occupy the whole room. So after several minutes, the smell would reach the back of the room. So we're going to explain it in this way. Uh, and this is known as a uh, Brownian motion and it's also known as diffusion. Brownian, Brownian motion is that these particles would be consciously colliding with the air particles. So they would be bumping into each other and they would have a very zigzag manner. They wouldn't be moving in straight lines. Diffusion is uh, that particles travel from a region of higher concentration to a region where they're not present, where they are in lower concentration. So this over here is the definition of diffusion, uh, that particles move from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. I'm going to describe this in further detail of why this process happens. So your energetic perfume particles, they evaporate. They leave, uh, for example, if Fiat put perfume on his shirt, then the particles are going to evaporate. They're going to uh, leave that. Uh, they change into cash state and they move randomly and freely in all directions. So they're all, they're randomly moving around and they constantly bump into air molecules, which is basically Brownian motion. So they would travel in a very zigzag manner and eventually they reach every corner of the room and they spread. So perfume particles travel from one end to the other end and that whole entire process is called diffusion. The last part of the question is that we need to explain why a windy day is a good drying day. Now here's a clothesline with uh, wet clothes on them. And uh, so there's a, there's a shirt uh, that is wet. Now, why is wind going to help uh, dry the clothes faster? 
and I'm going to use and explain that using kinetic particle theory. So let's for a second assume that these uh, red particles are water molecules. Now the first thing that happens is that these red molecules of water, they evaporate and they change into gaseous state, but they're hovering around, uh, around, the, around the wet water clothes. Now if there is wind, so let's say there's a strong wind that's blowing in this direction, what would that strong wind do? It's going to take these water molecules that have evaporated or changed into gaseous state and it's going to take them away. So here you can see the wind is taking these uh, water molecules away. These are the water molecules over here. They are also taken away by the wind. So all the water molecules are going with the wind. And once they go away from the wind, then more water molecules can evaporate. So the speed of evaporation would increase. So more water molecules from the clothes can now evaporate because the previous ones are now gone. And the wind is going to do exactly the same with these particles as well. So you can see more particles being carried away by the wind. So you can see those particles going away with the wind. These particles also getting carried away by the wind. And now more particles from the, from the uh, clothes, the wet clothes, they can now evaporate. And the same process is going to repeat. So that is how uh, wind, the presence of wind is going to speed up the drying process. So if I try to start and explain this, uh, the first part would be that water molecules, they gain energy. And where are they gaining energy from? Now, if it's a windy day, that means uh, air particles would be constantly colliding with them. So that's one source of energy as well. So your water molecules are going to bump into the air particles. The air particles are constantly traveling around. So windy day, and they're going to gain energy and they're going to change into gaseous state. And the gaseous water particles, so your gaseous water molecules, they are constantly removed. Uh, the wind is going to take them and carry them away by the wind and the whole evaporation process speeds up. So this is how uh, on a windy day evaporation speeds up. The first thing is that uh, the constant bombardment of air particles, they're going to transfer energy to these water molecules, which are going to become more energetic and they're going to change into gaseous state and they're going to overcome the intermolecular forces that were keeping them attracted to the clothes. And the wind, the moving wind, the moving air particles are going to carry these evaporated water particles away from the clothes so that they don't go back and stick to them. And this constantly repeats and this speeds up the evaporation process.